In terms of sad moments of the season, I think perhaps this is the saddest because it is time for this amazing banana behind me to go away. So this is a totally on camera angle, but this is the camera angle I have to use to be able to get the entirety of this red Abyssinian banana in the, in the frame. I have never grown a plant that has done this before. I planted this, it was probably three feet tall when I planted it. I mean, it was probably just over my waist in a two gallon container purchased for, I think $45 or $40 from a local nursery back in April. I kept in the house until the end of May or maybe even early June when it was safe to put out. And it grew into this enormous thing. So I've measured it. It is over eight feet tall that's not counting the three foot pot that it's in. So it actually reaches up. It's probably, that was measured two weeks ago. I'll bet it's actually over nine feet tall now. So the entirety of this contraption here is about 12 feet tall. So thank goodness I grew it in, is, in an enormous pot. This pot is three cubic feet, three, well, it's more than three cubic feet. It's three feet wide, square and tall. So thank goodness I have it in that kind of pot because the base of this thing, which you're going to see soon, went from about this big around to, you know, I mean, I'm going to say that's probably 16 inches diameter, but we'll see when we pull it out. So the number one question I have been asked this season, because I keep showing this banana, because you can't not show it, because it just steals the show, because it's enormous and huge and I think amazing. Um, the number one question I've been asked is, what are you going to do with it this winter? And you might have noticed I haven't really been answering that question. And that's because I had to do some research. This is the first time I've ever grown a banana. Uh, so I didn't really know exactly. I knew there were some things I could do. I had a vague idea, but I had to like look into it. So this is a banana that will never grow bananas and it certainly isn't hardy here in my zone 5b now there are some hardy bananas that i think you can you know do some winter protection on certainly in zone 6 maybe even zone 5 but i think it's mostly like zone 6 and up where you can do some kind of like winter pretty serious winter protection on it and be fine well that's obviously not a possibility the other option is i could bring this inside in a pot and like try to grow it now Obviously, that's not going to work. It's the pot will never move. The pot is enormous. The banana is enormous. So unless you have like your own personal enormous greenhouse or conservatory, not really an option. Even then, really hard to give it what it needs. And I have a feeling this is one of those plants that just invites a spider mite problem or some sort of bug problem if you were to bring it in. So I am going to bring this into the house and store it dormant. So my guide for this process has been Marianne Wilburn's book, Tropical Plants and How to Love Them. And I've been referring to this book a lot. It's only about a year old, but I have used this book lately more than probably any other gardening book that I own. So a really practical buy if you grow a lot of house, uh, tropical type plants as house plants or whatever. But so I'm using her method in this, which is basically a towel and bag method. So ideally, uh, I would have wait. I would be able to wait until this goes like a little bit dormant, like it's nipped by a little bit of frost, which will send a message to the plant of like, hey, it's time to go to sleep for a while. Um, but I, the timing is not working out for that. This is my last opportunity to do this for about two weeks. And I'm afraid that in those two weeks, something bad could happen. So it's just got to happen now. That's how this goes with plants, right? We do our best. Not everything always lines up. Okay, first step is to get this thing out of this pot and then we can move on from there but obviously there's going to be a lot of work getting all these plants out of this container in order to get to this banana uh, and i have no idea how this is going to go but i can envision hijinks ensuing here so let's let's give this a shot and see what happens
I just really wanted to get a picture with this banana standing up. Okay, here I am with my banana. I don't know how much this weighs, except to tell you that it is the heaviest plant I've ever picked up in my life. Okay, so this is how big it is. For reference, I am 5'2". I have shoes on, let's call it 5'3". This is how big it is. Okay, picture time's over, and this is where it gets really sad. Now I have to cut off all these leaves. Um, I brought out the kitchen knife. This is our bread knife. So I think this leaf is probably the biggest leaf. And so I'm gonna take that down and sand that up next to me so I can see what that looks like. Here we go, this is the height of one leaf. Five foot three, right here. What do we have, a foot and a half, two feet ahead above me? I mean, insane. So I just want to show you how much water is in these stems. So this is a, a um, chunk of leaf that I just cut off the bottom. So I don't know if you can see, let me just make sure we're focused there. But when you squeeze this, I mean, hang on. Look at how much water is just pouring out of these. It's, oh! Why do I always spray myself in the face with something? Anyways, I think you can see like, just in one little bit of stem, it's going up my arm now, one little bit of stem, how much water is pouring out of that. Okay, one other really cool thing. So this was the center stem where the new leaves come out. And this is like, it's super thin and kind of soft. This is a new leaf that would have unfurled from the inside. I'm probably gonna break it when I try to get this open the rest of the way, but is that, here we go. Look at that. Is that not so cool? And, oh, look, there's another one inside. It's like a Russian doll, but that's the new leaf that would have unfurled. Let's see how far we can go with these. So I've done an excellent job of making a very large mess here, which is what I'm very good at. But what I've done is neaten up all these leaves where I've cut things off. Um, I cut it to um, sort of the growing point where the leaves are coming out the top. Um, I was a little unsure of exactly where that is, but I, I think I got that right. And now what I've been doing is sort of working the loose soil out of these roots, which there are not that many of. It's rather shocking that this thing stays upright. Um, but what I'm not doing is introducing any water to this. Now, um, I will note that there's a lot of different ways to overwinter a banana um, and some of them will tell you to rinse these roots off with water and get all this soil out of here. Um, first of all, I'll just say this. Anytime you see multiple methods of how to do something with a plant, you should take comfort in that because what that means is that there's not one way, which means uh, you can do a lot of different things and not mess it up. So I am following Marianne's method because that's the one that I've been studying. So I am not introducing any water here. I'm just shaking off all the loose soil that I can off of here um, to just kind of get these roots a little bit free. There's not much in there left. There's a little bit at the kind of along the base here, but it's not moist. So I've also seen a lot of methods that talk about tipping this upside down to get some of that water out of it, which makes a lot of sense to me. Now, Marianne doesn't talk about that either. Um, however, the, the methods I've seen for that are talking about bananas that are like a fraction of the size of this one. I don't physically know how you would keep this upside down. I, I don't know how that would happen. So I'm not going to do that. 
although I can see that there's some wisdom there. So the next thing we do, we've got this all cleaned up. Next thing we do is take some old towels and I'm just going to wrap them around these roots. And the key to this is that these bananas want enough moisture, but not too much moisture. They are fussy little buggers as far as that goes. So if you just stick this in your basement, odds are it's going to die because it needs some moisture in it. You leave it there with too much moisture in it, it rots. So in order to achieve this sort of happy place for this banana, what we're going to do is just wrap a towel around it. And Marianne describes in her book that the reason you do this is because it will suck excess moisture out and it stays a little damp and then it puts it the it kind of puts it back in when it needs it not puts it back in but the the plant can kind of draw some moisture from that when it needs it so that's what we're doing here the good news is as i've never thrown away a towel in my entire life so i have a house full of old towels and uh, i keep them around for the dogs so i think what i'm going to do is maybe do two towels sort of I don't know. We're going to figure this out. It's, it's a little hard because it's so heavy. I'm tying this towel on here more to just make sure that I can get it into the pot easily than I am for really much else. This is an old just an old nursery can that I think is big enough to fit this thing in and lined with a plastic bag. Okay, so I'm not gonna pull the plastic up on this yet. Um, when I see pictures of Mary Ann's, it's sort of loosely pulled up. I'm not gonna do that yet because there is so much water in this right now. That's something that I can do later in winter as I check on this. Now, this is the, this next part. Now, this next part is probably the most important part of the whole thing. This needs to be stored in a cool, dark, frost-free place. Um, ideally, that's somewhere between like 35 and 45 degrees. Um, but listen, a lot of things want that temperature, and if you can't quite give it, um, then you have to just do your best with as as close as you can reach to those conditions. So that happens to also be roughly the same conditions uh, as dahlias like to be stored in, although they don't really like to go down to that um, 35 temperature. So I am going to store this in the same part of my basement that I store the dahlias in. And we happen to have this little room that's a little, it's our little well pump room, which is off the corner of our basement. It's right underneath our patio and it's quite cool. And last year we actually put a couple of little insulation panel doors on that to actually keep it even cooler in there because I felt like it was getting, it was it was topping, it was getting up to 55 in there at some times. So that has really helped a lot. So it just stays very cold in there and obviously dark. So this is gonna go in the corner there. You are not gonna see that process because this is gonna require Two people to get it down the stairs. This is an experiment for me. Marianne's been doing it for years so um, hopefully her method works as well for me as it does for her. Uh, this will come out in probably late winter, early spring, and I will have to pot it up in a container, possibly even the container that it's in right here, we'll see, um, because what we're going to need to do is get it growing some roots. We need to grow what they call stabilizing roots so that when I do plant this out, uh, it actually can stand up. Because as you might imagine, this isn't going to stand up very well since it's only got this many roots. So the next big question is, what happens to this for next year? Well, I don't know. It might be too big to go back in this planter next year. Um, so maybe it'll go straight in the garden. I have a whole winter to figure that out. And, uh, and let's not put our cart before our horse. So we'll see how this goes. Anyway, that is how I'm overwintering this banana. And I'm happy I'm finally able to answer that question for so many people who have been asking. All right, stay tuned to see what we get up to next. Bye.